Hello! It's come to that time of year that we're going to be doing the Christmas cake. So we're going to actually just start with our marzipan. Now feel free to just go out and buy a block of marzipan. Because I'm doing the recipe I thought I'd better at least attempt to make one of them. I do have two cakes so if this doesn't actually work I'll be keeping this one and giving the other one away as a gift. So first and foremost we've got 175 grams of icing sugar which for some reason is not wanting to go through my sift today but we'll just keep working at it. 175 grams of icing sugar, we have 125 grams of, I've got golden castor sugar that just happens to be what I had in the house for something else and we have two packets of ground almonds. Now depending if you've tried to do marzipan before that might not seem like very much I went to my old bureau book and they wanted a kilo. Now, a kilo of almonds, unless you were able to get it wholesale in Orkney, would have cost me £10. Well, there's absolutely no way I was going to be spending that kind of money when we're trying to do it on a budget. So I'm only using 200 grams of ground almonds. Just straight in with them. I'll just put everything out my road as I go. And then the sugar as well. And we shall just mix these together. Kenny was telling me it looked cluttered tonight. However, I knew I was going to be getting most things out of the road just as I was going. So you want to make sure you've combined all of these together. Now, as usual, I might just get in here with my hands in a minute. What sugar was it you added there? I've used castor sugar, golden castor sugar. Mm. think I said. Maybe not. I thought I had. Yeah. But anyway, we can just... Have a little domestic on the side here. Well, oh, whilst I'm, I'm actually doing it, what were you going to say? Another one. <laughs> Another one. Well, um, what I was actually going to say was I had been asked if I would do a clouty dumpling, which we actually did do yesterday. We, we started to film it, but I don't know what went wrong with it. So we will have another bash, but maybe closer to Hogmanay. Or maybe I'll be doing two or three over this course of next year and you'll get it next Christmas. Now to this, what I have is just one egg, but I'm going to possibly, because you know how icing sugar takes in the liquid very quickly, I'll maybe just put it in a little at a time. So I'm going to put a wee well just in the middle, but I'm going to put in two or three drops just of almond. Now that depends on how strong you like your almonds. I'm going to maybe do almost half a teaspoon, I think, because I quite like it strong. I know Kenny does as well. So I've just lightly beaten one egg up and we're going to just maybe half of it, see how we get on with that. And hopefully this should all combine. But I might, I might just have to adapt a little as we go here and actually add some more egg. We shall just keep working at it. The beauty of doing this actually today is, you know, if you're wanting to get things done ahead of Christmas, we're putting this out this week, this, so that's the week before Christmas, so as you've got some days to do this, um, is this will keep in the fridge, like your, your marzipan will keep in the fridge for about a week. So if you're wanting to get this done, you know, when it goes out on Wednesday or Thursday, it will keep until next week. I think I'm maybe going to need the, the rest of the egg. Now, if this gets too wet, too sticky, just add some more icing sugar. We are just playing around a bit with it here, see how we get on. It's just as well you always make sure you wash your hands before you start because invariably I do end up getting in with my hands just to because I like to feel the texture, I like to know where I'm at with things, so I'm literally just going to do that. Because until I can get it's like making bread, until I can get my hands into into the ingredients I don't really know how wet it is and you could I could run the risk of putting in more liquid here when I don't actually think I'm going to need it. However I think that was the mistake I made with yesterday's clutty dumpling. I'm standing there going no Kenny I don't think I'm needing any more liquid and I think I'm a bit I don't need a wee bit but never mind. Anyway this I can have I have to say is definitely starting to smell like icing uh, like marzipan so hopefully it's worked. We shall just this I'm going to just empty this out so don't get all worried about my fingers going on and about it. We're just needing to have some for working on. 
What's that? Icing sugar. Thank you, dear. And I'll just bring it out and hopefully we'll be able to knead it. But if, again, if you feel like you're needing just an, another tiny wee bit liquid, all I'm going to do is add a little bit more almond essence. Essence. But we shall see how we feel it's going to go. As long as I feel as though it's taking on some consistency of a, like a dough. Now some people would actually tell you that you should probably put this now in the fridge for 24 hours. I don't. I mean, I'm just wanting to get things done at Christmas time. So I am going to maybe just, I think I need a wee bit more liquid. No, I think it's coming together. I was going to say I was going to add some more, but I don't think I will. Did I just put half a bottle of cloth there? Oh, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Oh, what a messy cook I am. But anyway, at least I'm trying. Right, so. I'm going to just pop this to the side for a second. We definitely have it all combined here. So I'll just pop some more ice and sugar out just so it doesn't stick to the surface. And I'll pop it to the side. And then we'll just see to the cake. Now I've put, I've put it up high just so as you can see what I'm doing. But I mean it's entirely up to yourself how you work with your cake. Some people like to have it on like a big um, plinth, you know, that'll turn. Oh, the luxury of having a big pinch at the turn. And I'll be getting it out for making a mess again. Mr. Photographer likes things being kept neat and tidy. But I'll just supply that in the bin in a minute, dear, don't worry. And here is our first Christmas cake. So, that's looking not bad. It smells delicious. This is my alcoholic Christmas cake. This one's the best part of a, I can't remember if it's like been a half a bottle or a quarter bottle of uh, brandy but it's had a lot anyway. So first and foremost, apricot jam. I put just about half a jar in here and I've given it a good old mix just to thin it slightly in case there's any bits. Now it's up to you whether you're wanting to do the whole cake with your marzipan or just half. I am going for the whole thing. I like marzipan the whole way round. Now don't worry if you're making a mess here. The, this is not going to be the um, plate that this will stay on. It will go on a nice silver one just toward Christmas. And just turn it. That's the advantage of putting it up slightly higher. You can just get it turned. I either use apricot jam actually, it was always apricot jam that was traditional and it's obviously still done traditionally because we didn't get it just in the first shop we went to. I mean there was a big like space on the shelf so I'm presuming that people are still making their own cakes so that's good. I won't flatter myself that they've all made mine but oh, I'm going to get rid of these two bits, I've got two bit bits of I'm not needing. I obviously hadn't mixed it and there's another bit. Obviously I hadn't mixed it as well as I thought. But like I keep saying, don't worry if it looks messy just now because this is going to be going on to a different base. Right. Now that's your cake prep. Excuse me, I'll just wipe my fingers a wee bit. And then all we're needing to do is roll this out. Now you're needing to just obviously judge it. I don't know how good I'll be at judging it, but we'll just have to. You might find that you've got too much. Just keep turning it, roll and turn. So as you try and keep it as much as you can in a circle, roll and turn. And then I'm just having to get that out my road for a start. Bring it this way a wee bit, because you always roll with extra weight for some reason on one side. Must be your stronger arm. So I'll just try and bring it back round to the circle. I'll be asking Kenny in a second, does that look like it'll cover the whole thing, Ken? Maybe make it just slightly bigger. Yeah. 
No comment. No comment if you're not going to be held responsible. Fifth Amendment. Oh well, I'm sure we could make some sugared mice or something. Right, now. I think it looks like it will. It looks it. Because I don't like it thick anyway, so. We'll just go for it. So just roll it back up. And please don't be thinking I make that look so easy because it really isn't very difficult. Just bring it down, leave a wee skirt and then just right back over the top and then let it come down. Now this side is slightly short is it? Oh no it's just fine. And then just tuck it in. Nope, that one's coming away a wee bit and that's alright because you know, don't worry if it rips or that because you can patch it. And you see, I mean, it's starting to want to come away itself here. So I'll just cut it down, tuck it in, and again, if it starts to come away, don't worry about it. You just, you can patch it like I say. Just turn it a little. In fact, I'll just work this side now. Cory it as they say. And I hope you do actually think about doing this because, I mean, it, you know, it, it gives you some satisfaction when you know that you've done it yourself. And if you shop around, you might get your um, almonds, you know, two for one fifty or whatever. It does work out a wee bit more expensive than just buying it, but at least you know you've done it yourself. And I think... This is just about us once I've got this last wee bit off. And then I am going to just leave this. I might just patch it up a little. And that's more or less done. This is just to get left now for 24 hours to dry out. And then we'll do the icing sugar. Now, again, this will be up to you. You can just go and buy the packet of fondant icing. And then just roll it straight over. I prefer to do it with the old fashioned way, with the traditional royal icing and have snowy peaks and things. So I'll need um, obviously more icing sugar, I'll need some glycerine and I'll need four egg whites. So if you're following that one, that's the kind of ingredients you're going to need. But that we shall just leave now for 24 hours to dry out and come back and see you tomorrow. See you, bye. Okay, ready for the second part of the Christmas cake. All blinged up as you can see, ready to get ready for Christmas. But just before I start, I'll just pop this out the road for a second. I want you to be aware that I'm leaving this as it is. But once we had finished with this yesterday, we had some of the marzipan left over. So we've let it dry out, we have tasted it. Now it tastes absolutely fine. There's not an issue with the taste. However, it's slightly grainy. So I'm wondering if maybe by using old fashioned recipes, if perhaps, you know, they weren't used to using refined sugars and things back then so much, like Mary Queen of Scots days when this was started, it wouldn't have been soft, soft sugar. So it's up to you. If you don't mind things a wee bit grainy, crack out with the recipe I've given. If you would rather it was very smooth, don't use the caster sugar and just use icing sugar until you get it to the thickness and the paste that you'll see in the recipe. I think we've covered that one. Now, Today is royal icing time. Now again you can just buy the box, add some icing sugar till you get it as stiff as you want, just follow directions on the box. I make my own. So I have three egg whites already in a really big bowl. We have 675 grams of icing sugar which has already been sieved. We're going to be using three teaspoons of lemon juice and one and a half of glycerine. Try and have an idea in your head already how you're wanting this cake to, to finish in appearance. You know, if you're wanting to do it a bit funny with a wee sweaty dog or something. I'm just going to be using a little reindeer, a little uh, tree. And then again, have a wee collection of ribbons. You get them in the charity shops and things. Like I got this one for 10 pence. So I think I'll probably use the silver. Can't see it. Sorry, apologies. I think I'll probably use the silver once we're finished. Still can't see it in your hand. But, yeah. Well, we'll right. see it once oh, the picture good. goes up at the end, okay? Yeah. So just have an idea. You might want it a bit fancier with a big bow. You know, just entirely up to yourself. But just have a rough idea. There, we have a big bow there. You know, just have an idea yourself how you're wanting this cake to finish before you crack it. 
So this may take a while, so Kenny and I might just pop in and out every so often. You've got to beat your egg whites now until they're frothy. So we'll start off by doing that and we'll see how long it takes. But I'll maybe just give Kenny the nod and he can stop filming for a second. Okay, we've got to the stage where it's really frothy. It probably took just about a minute, a minute and a half maximum. But you can see, you know, it, it's frothed right up. So there you have one frothy egg whites. Not, you don't need it as stiff as if... That looks quite rude. I shouldn't have said that, but I've just seen it. Carry on, Helen. Don't think. Just, just, you started to laugh. Right, anyway, this is going to be, again, take a while. You have to put in a good couple of these at a time and then fold it in. Now, you'll know your preferred method for folding. You know, you're literally just folding it in. Some people use a knife. I've got two or three things here, so it's like you know that anything will go. Biggest spatula, which is my preferred method. You're just cutting through it and folding it in. And that's, you're going to have to do this the whole way through, so it's going to take a few minutes. I'll just do one more, and then Kenny can switch off again if he likes. So you're just folding it in and folding it over. Just as though you were pulling back your dough and pushing it away. It's the same kind of motion, only this time you're incorporating your icing sugar to the whites. The reason you do it like this is you're not wanting all these any lumps to maybe filter through and you're wanting to get it airy. You're airy eating your icing. But the Kenny's want to just stop for a second, but I'll just continue till we're finished. Okay. So it's almost all folded in now. It's probably taken three or four minutes just to get to this stage. Now you'll feel it really thick, but don't worry about that because you actually want it very thick. But right now you're about to thin it a little before you beat it back up again. So I want three teaspoons of lemon juice. And then just one and a half of glycerine. might not open, look good. Must have been a good wee seal in that one. Some friendly, I call them. Right, one and a half of glycerine. Just pop these out the road. And then what you're needing to do now is just beat it again with the whatever implement you're using. I'll just mix these through a little with my hand. And then I'm needing to clear off my spatula because you're not wanting to waste anything, obviously. And then we'll just start to beat it until it comes to really stiff peaks. That's because I'm wanting to do an icing that's um, going to be snow seamed. If you want it a wee bit looser, then you can always add an extra egg white. But we'll just do this one just now. I'll just start doing it and again Kenny might just switch off in a second but it gets too noisy. Okay, now that took probably anything maybe two to four minutes but I would say probably about three. We'll go for the middle. And you can see it's thick. You can imagine that that's it's not going to fall over. I mean my um, whisks were struggling to get through that but it's gone lovely and white really lush looking and that's what you're looking for you're looking for that snow scene and then we're going to just ice it now like I say I'm quite lucky because I'm not worrying too much about the fact that it's going to be do you know what I'll do Kenny I'll come this side I'll work back to front for you I've put it on the board it's going to be on already so I'll just whack some on now this keeps in your fridge as well, so you can make this, you know, a wee while before you need it. It's up to you how thick you want this. I'm going to just whack it on. And it should freeze, if you know, if you've made too much. But just turn it, just make some of that, if you had marzipan left over last night, just turn them into, like, wee luscious mice things. But you might, some people like their icing really, really thick. So you can always 
just keep layering it up. It takes a wee while to dry out. So, you know, make sure you're doing this a couple of days before Christmas. I mean, usually I put my recipes up uh, for midnight on the Tuesday night for Wednesday morning. But this one will likely not go up till Wednesday lunchtime, but I'm not really needing to tell you that. Because you'll see that when it goes up. Right the way around. So once you're right the way around, then you can have an you've got an idea of how much you've got left or whatever. Now it's up to you. You could see how the lights of this one swirled here. You leave that on your board if you want to just create some swirls. It will just give the effect of snow. I'm just going to put some more on because I like it good and thick. And like I say, though, if you're putting it on as thick as I am, you are going to need to give it a couple of days to dry out. At least a day. Just right the way around and then what have I missed a bit? I'm getting these signals here. Thank you Kenneth. You'll make that chef's apprentice yet. Chef, what a joke. Comedy cook maybe. Alright, we have another thin bit there. Now if you want this smooth, just use a metal spatula and smooth it out. So you can make it a wee bit wet and then you would just be smoothing over. Always just one way towards yourself if you're wanting it smooth. And then the same round the sides. But if you end up with a wee bit of lines that you're not wanting, like I say, just a wee bit of a wet spatula and that'll do the trick. I'm not bothering because I'm having a frosty scene anyway. So mine's like I say, is just getting lashed on, pulling it from the sides a wee bit, and then all we're going to do is, in fact, I'll just use this one, and you're just going to peek it. So you're just literally, because you're wanting it to have like snow peaks. I think we'll go for the Cairngorms effect here, or the Coolins, our friends in Sky. We shall go for the Coolins effect. You might just need to take occasionally take it off your... The sides don't matter quite so much because obviously you're going to be putting a ribbon on. But it's just if, you take, if you're taking the ribbon off, it's quite nice to see that you've peaked it the whole way around. Now, I'm going to have to leave this to set, like I say, overnight. But I'm wanting this to look particularly snowy. So once this is actually set, I'll come back and just show you just a tiny wee trick right at the end of doing this. So we'll see you probably tomorrow again. Thank you for watching. Okay, for the purposes of me being able to get this up in enough time for you to be able to do it, I'm going to have to crack out before mine is actually dry. But please, please, at home, wait until your icing is completely dried out. So I'm not going to be able to ribbon my cake because, like I say, it's still a bit wet. But what I would tell you to do is, like I said yesterday, just choose your ribbon that you want. You pop it round and you either secure it with just a little bit of icing paste that you've already made up, just a tiny, tiny wee bit of paste at the back, or even you can use a sterilised pin. You know, as long as you've sterilised your pin, you can just pin it in. But what I'm going to just do is I'll just create a sort of wintry scene. Now, what I think of, so obviously this, I've cut the ribbon for the cake, so it's not quite big enough for my board here, but we can just pretend. Um, what I'm suggesting here is a replacement to candles, if you have a big enough table anyway. This is like a, a replacement to candles or a wee side table and just create like an alpine scene. For me, I'm doing Ben Nevis, obviously. Not quite sure that this looks like Fort William, but you'll get the picture. So I've just got my little deer and my little covered uh, fir tree just for the top of what could be classed as your mountain. And then I've got a couple of wee snowmen that are actually ice skating, believe it or not. So we've created a kind of the impression of an ice rink underneath. And I have a man what, maybe delivering the last post or something? We might need to bring you round here and bring these ones over this side a wee bit. 
and then just create your scene. Uh, you know, I've got some wee ornaments that I've just brought through from the living room for them for the idea of doing this. But it doesn't you can have a wee forest? You know, just anything, just to be creating your alpine scene. Well, I'll just have a couple of wee houses around the church. I've got a couple of wee people that can just stand in the doorway of the church. Oh, if you'll stand. And then to finish off your scene, all you're needing is some icing sugar to dust. Now, I'm quite lucky because I picked up one of these in the charity shop, but a sieve will do, a fine sieve. And then you're literally, imagining this is on your big table or whatever you're wanting it, you're literally just giving it a fine dusting of snow. It has literally just snowed and everything is just covered in a fine dusting of snow. And I think that's all I'm just about needing to do, apart from to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. And hopefully we'll see you next week with some ideas with what to do with some leftovers. So I hope you've enjoyed it and thank you for watching. Bye. We wish you a Merry Christmas.